Welcome to Party Branding, where we at Canning's Purple take a look at the Australian political branding over the last five decades. My name is Jamie Wilkinson, and this week we're going to take a look at the Australian Labour Party and its branding over the last 50 years or so. So the earliest logo we could find for the Australian Labour Party was the one here in the background, just behind Gough Whitlam. It is utilitarian, to say the least, a conservative, early 70s Labour Party with quite a plain brand, really. But in the foreground, we see another successful brand in the making, and one which was much more exciting that brand being Gough Whitlam himself. Gough Whitlam was the Kevin 07 of the 70s. He was Gough 72. Gough Americanised his campaign to some extent and brought youthful exuberance, celebrity endorsements, and of course his famous advertising jingle to Australian politics. The Labour Party's It's Time campaign and jingle was filled with celebrities repositioning the Labour brand from old-fashioned to modern, cutting-edge and optimistic for the future. The It's Time campaign was adapted from Sir Robert Menzies of the Liberal Party, but other campaigns in this decade included Whitlam, He's So Much Better, Give Australia the Go Ahead, and Get Australia Working. Messages and branding targeting women voters also started to appear from this era onwards. The popular Gough Whitlam brand, seen here together with Little Patty, propelled Labour to great heights in the early and mid-70s, but their brand crashed with his as Malcolm Fraser and the NLP rose to power. So a new decade and a new brand for the Australian Labour Party. In the early 80s, they ditched their initials for their full name in their logo above the flag. The use of the flag initially raised quite a few eyebrows. Now, of course, it's been done to death, and we've seen many brands with the Australian flag in it somewhere. But really, only political parties can pull it off, and Labour were the first. The branding became consistent in look and message, big, Bold block type in their campaign flyers and bumper stickers helped create a brand that was solid and consistent and strong. Campaigns of the Hawke era included Bringing Australia Together, Put Australia First, and Let's Stick Together, Let's See It Through. Catchy headlines and slogans are great, but they can backfire. Liberal's Andrew Peacock once said, The answer is liberal, to which the Prime Minister Bob Hawke replied, If the answer is liberal, it must have been a bloody stupid question. So to the 90s, Nirvana, Pearl Jam and Grunge, and in 1992, a new logo for the ALP to match their new Prime Minister. Dropping their full name, they modernised their logo, drawing inspiration from the flag once again, the red stripe from the Union Jack and the Southern Cross. In the Keating era, Keating, who hated the use of the flag, rebranded and resurrected the old Labour brand for the true believers. Like many brands modernised in the 90s, it looked pretty terrible. We can see another example of the continuing targeting of the female vote here by Bob Hawke, until Paul Keating seized the reins of the Labour Party early into this new decade with his emphasis on leadership, although he doesn't look very convinced about it on this photo. His perhaps less likeable persona possibly led to the decision to use leadership as the focus. Labour spent much of this decade in opposition, but their campaign messages were mostly positive. Paul Keating wanted opportunity for all Australians. Kim Beasley wanted a secure future for all Australians and said Australia deserves better because that's what I stand for although not everybody was so sure. So another new decade and again a new logo to mark a new leader of the opposition, a much cleaner more modern logo that went back to using Australian Labour. Still using the flag but with softer, less harsh and more friendly colours. Kim Beasley told us that these unfair laws will go and then we had the short reign of Mark Latham and Simon Crean. Latham disastrously led with Mark Latham and Labour taking the pressure off families and ease the squeeze, although easing the squeeze was not on his mind in one memorable handshake encounter. Many thought the Labour brand was in serious trouble. More than a decade out of power, unable to win an election, something had to change. But what happened in 2007 changed Australian political branding forever. Enter Kevin 07. Positive, fresh, new, different. All these ideas were infused inside the Kevin 07 brand. It propped up and gave new life to a flagging Labour. Headlines like new leadership, fresh thinking and new leadership, fresh ideas. 
Kevin 07 was everywhere, on t-shirts, buttons, clocks and in the sky, where the 90s brand used capital letters to shout at you, a new friendlier, more modern, crisp and clean font type was used, posters of a simple portrait of an earnest, youthful, stylish and even a bit nerdy, Kevin, with new leadership as the headline, did away with all of the clutter of the past 10 years and gave a clear message. The Kevin 07 branding messages were positive, powerful messages, and combined with the negative messages against the exiting John Howard, they propelled Kevin and the Labour Party into great popularity and success. Someone in the Labour Party must have had a 10-year brand itch because, once again, Labour changed their logo. It's more of a logo revision than a rebrand. It removed the cumbersome Australia from the logo and morphed the blocky old logo into a modern flag, harkening back to its 80s design, but with a more modern twist. It's become a bit of a fad, the flag, but it's well done here. After two leadership spills, in 2010, ALP branding focused on moving forward from the leadership battles as much as anything else. But the negative Don't Risk Tony Abbott campaign was also a key message. A stronger economy, better hospitals and schools slogan was also used. In the election of 2013, a new way was widely used, but local members focused on their work in the community. Some, like Jenny Macklin, distancing themselves from the Labour brand so far as to not even include it in their marketing. Perhaps indicative of wanting to distance herself from the recent Labour power struggles, and perhaps not. In any case, Labour didn't win their election, but she won hers. Which brings us to today. This election, Labour is about being positive. Tony Abbott is gone, along with the negative aspect of that campaign. Labour's 100 positive policies is stamped in red ink across much of its marketing collateral. The Labour red speaks of official action. And alongside this is a headline to Bill Clinton's 1992 campaign, We'll Put People First, or just People First. Labour is wanting to position itself as the People's Party. Their website imagery certainly matches this with great photos of Bill Shorten in the community, and their campaign is very much focused on Mr Shorten, the person, which is in stark contrast to the Liberals, who are focusing very much on policies. He even has a bus with a huge image of his face travelling around. And although no official name for the bus has yet been given, Bussy McBusface has been making the rounds. This intense focus on the man behind, or rather in front of the party, has worked for them before in Kevin 07. So overall, Labour is continually updating its brand, reinventing itself every decade. Its brand is about growth, leadership, energy, the future and change, and it often leverages the popularity of its leader to increase its own brand's popularity from Gough Whitlam and Kevin 07 and now Bill Shorten. With this strategy, a popular leader can lend the Labour brand gravitas and energy, but it also means that their brand strength is tied to its leader as well, which is great when the polls are in their favour, but not so much when they're falling. Will Bill Shorten's Labour brand bus reach its destination, or will it get stuck trying to make the final turn? Australia waits to be convinced. In the next couple of weeks, we'll have a look at the Liberal brand over the past five decades, and finally, we'll complete our trifecta with a look at the Greens. But for now, thanks for watching.